Well, thank you, Laura. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on a panel with Adam. We both used, used to work together at the Heritage Foundation, but then we both moved on to free market organizations uh, where we felt more philosophically comfortable. I don't think any of my friends from Heritage are out there, so the joke sort of uh, misses its, uh, its real enjoyment for me. Uh, Adam used to wear a bow tie all the time. Uh, I never could quite bring myself to do it, and apparently neither can he anymore. Uh, but what I want to do, uh, we're going to divide this up. I'm going to talk about what are the principles of, a, of good tax policy and how does this issue of a state sales tax cartel fit into that and then Adam is going to cover some of the details on the so-called streamlined sales tax proposal and some of the issues that that raises. Uh, first, in terms of what is good tax policy, uh, I think we all probably, at least hopefully, have some understanding that we want to have low rates, we want to avoid double taxation. We want to avoid loopholes. And then, perhaps most importantly for this issue, we want to have territorial tax systems. We know that this is very important in terms of, uh, of the national tax debate. There's all these discussions about the proper tax treatment of U.S. multinationals that are trying to compete around the world. And pretty much everybody outside of the Obama administration understands that we need to try to move to a territorial tax system. In other words, we should not be double taxing American companies who are competing for market share around the world. Why don't we want to double tax them? Because they're already paying tax where they're earning that income. So an American company trying to compete for market share in Ireland, it's paying the 12.5% Irish corporate tax. Why should it have to be taxed a second time on that income by the IRS, especially when all its foreign competitors from places like the Netherlands, Germany, Canada, et cetera, et cetera, they don't face that double tax. In other words, territorial taxation is the right idea. You can tax whatever occurs inside your borders. You can tax it at a very punitive, onerous rate. You can have bad tax policy if you want to, but do not try to tax things outside your borders. That violates one of the fundamental principles of tax policy. And that, indeed, is exactly what is going on with this whole issue of taxing the Internet. Because the question isn't whether the Internet should be taxed. The question isn't whether or not we want to have some special tax-free sector of our, of our economy while the bricks and mortar businesses are taxed. That's not the issue at all. The issue is whether or not states should try to tax things outside their borders. Every state right now has the freedom to reform their state sales tax systems, to apply them not only to goods that are sold, but also to services that are provided and to exports. Because what this issue is really about is that certain states, perhaps even all of them for all I know, have decided they don't want to tax exports. Well, I actually don't agree with that. I don't think that's good tax policy. They should tax everything sold inside their borders at the same rate, ideally a very low rate. They should reform their state sales taxes. This all deals with something that's called a discussion about origin-based sales taxes versus destination-based sales taxes. Very boring issue. Don't want to spend more than 30 seconds on it. But it simply deals with how do you tax transactions that cross borders. In an ideal tax system that's based on the principle of territorial taxation, where the good is sold or where the service is sold or whatever it is that's being sold, that's where the tax is levied. So if I, as a Virginia resident, want to buy something online from Maryland, Maryland should be taxing that because it's a sale that is originating in Maryland. The state of Virginia should not be trying to tax a Maryland merchant. Now, of course, Virginia does have the right, and you, for those of you who really have the misfortune of getting into this issue, you may have heard of something called the use tax. States do have the right to say, we want to tax you, Dan Mitchell, on the basis of whatever products you bought in other states. They certainly can do that, but... And a matter of fact, a lot of states do do that, but the compliance rate is probably about 5% at best. Why? Because how on earth is the state of Virginia going to know if I bought something from a Maryland uh, merchant? I remember being at a conference once where a government official from the state of Connecticut uh, was telling a story about, well, now that I'm an, an elected official, I better make sure to comply with every, uh, every single uh, uh, part of the tax code. And so he contacted the tax office and said, can you send me a use tax form because I want to make sure I'm completely obeying all the laws. And it turned out that the state of Connecticut wasn't even printing the forms because nobody ever bothered to fill them out. 
Well, the only reason you have things like this is because governments have this confusion. They want to have a destination-based tax system because they like the idea of, of, of exempting their exports because the idea is, oh, let's try to you know, have the government tilt the playing field so we can concentrate production in our state, and then they want to tax uh, imports. It's, it's sort of almost a, a state-based version of protectionism. But again, if you go with the right approach, which is an origin-based sales tax system, the whole issue of unfairness to brick and mortar companies disappears because the only reason that's, that presumed unfairness exists right now is because some states are exempting, uh, exempting their exports, as I said. So in reality, there's really three things that we're looking at, a pure origin-based system, current law, and a pure destination-based system. A lot of people don't like current law because current law has the Swiss cheese loophole-ridden state sales tax systems, almost all of which, if not all of which, exempt exports. Uh, and that does create a little bit of unfairness for the uh, brick and mortar people. I personally would be surprised if more than 10% of online sales are for tax reasons. I think it's mostly for convenience. But nonetheless, brick and mortar people are pointing out that there is something a little bit unfair about the current system. Well, the question is, how do you address it? Do you address it by going to the destination-based system, having this sort of cartel of state governments where they all agree to collect and share inf information, or do we go with an origin-based system which is consistent with the good policy of territorial taxation? Well, Adam's going to get into a lot more of the details of what this destination-based streamlined sales tax proposal uh, would involve. Uh, but what I want to do is highlight not only the fact that the destination-based system is based on the wrong kind of tax policy, but I want to raise an issue that I'm not sure Adam's going to cover, and that's the implications for privacy. We already know that there are big problems, not only in America, but around the world, of governments mishandling and mismanaging the information that they collect on people. Well, imagine what would be implied by having the 50 state governments join in some cartel, and as part of this cartel, they're all supposed to collect information on anything sold by merchants in their state, so they can then share that information with other states around the country. And of course, they have to figure out, okay, we have 45 of the 50 states have sales taxes, but then you have all these local sales taxes, and you have to have this very complicated database trying to figure out what is the right tax to levy if you're going to do a destination-based system, but you're collecting this big database of information. And so when Adam wants to order something frilly from Victoria's Secret, uh, uh, because he just likes wearing frilly things sometimes, well, what business is of the government to collect information that might then wind up getting leaked out or some hacker is going to dig into it or governments? You know, imagine the 50 different state governments, what types of arrangements that they'll make to try to safeguard this data. It's going to be a nightmare and it's going to lead to a mess. And the only reason that we face this threat, and, and I'm not even talking about embarrassing online purchases, just your credit card information. I do not trust that governments will safeguard that information. It's already enough of a hassle that we have to worry about companies that have a definite financial incentive to safeguard their data, and that turns out not to be 100% safe. I certainly don't have faith that governments, who simply want to collect all that information as part of grabbing more revenue from the economy, I don't want, I don't want to trust them at all. And so the implementation, even though if you read the streamlined sales tax proposal, they have a couple of pages, oh, we're going to protect privacy. Oh, that makes me feel so comfortable. It's sort of like the politicians in 1913 who said, don't worry about letting the government have an income tax. They'll never let it go above 10 percent. And we saw what happened with that. You give government a little bit of power, it means you're giving government a lot of power. You give government a little bit of an entree into your personal affairs, you're giving government a blank check to know everything about you. It's not a good idea. Let me now go ahead and t turn to one last item that I think is very important. And that's the issue of tax competition. If you read about some of the state governments that are pushing hard for this idea, what are they complaining about? They're complaining that their revenue base is being poached. In other words, they assume that they have an automatic first claim to, any, to tax any economic activity by anybody that has any relationship with their jurisdiction. So you as a consumer, if you're buying things across borders, they want the ability to tax you. Why? Because they hate the thought that people might actually choose 
to do things in jurisdictions with lower tax burdens. Some of you who deal with fiscal policy are probably familiar with the fact that you have all these high tax governments around the world, like France and Germany, that are trying to shut down places like Switzerland and Ireland and Hong Kong that have lower tax regimes. This is the whole international tax competition issue. It's the same principle that's at work with this sales tax cartel that the state governments want to set up. The reason, or I should be fair, one of the reasons that they are drawn to the destination-based system is because it does allow them to squash tax competition. It basically means that a citizen of a state no longer has the freedom and the ability uh, to lower their tax burdens by shopping in another state. Now, not completely. It's a not, a, not an ironclad system. You would still be able to drive across borders, and you would still be able to buy something in another state. You'd probably have to pay cash for it, and you'd be able to drive back to your state, and you'd have to therefore then not fill out the use tax form. But maybe the government will wind up you know, doing something to make it so that you can't even do that anymore. But that's what's one of the things that's going on that disturbs me. We know that governments have a tendency to overspend. We look at our, the long-term forecast for the federal government, and we see that we are going to become Greece if we don't make changes. Well, the exact same thing happens on the state and local government level as well. They have made all these promises, especially to the government employee unions. They've gotten themselves in deep fiscal trouble. And instead of actually reforming their, their, uh, their bankrupt pension systems, uh, their unsustainable commitments to, for entitlements and other forms of state spending, they're trying to figure out ways. I guess uh, that's a, probably a negative reaction on my speech, uh, but they're trying to figure out ways to, to uh, in effect, extract more money uh, from the people in their state. And when you look at it from all these different angles, from the perspective of what is good tax policy, to the perspective of protecting privacy, to the perspective of trying to force governments to compete with each other so that they have to make reforms to their fiscal systems before it's too late, for all these different reasons, an origin-based tax system is much better. You can get rid of the inequity between brick and mortar and online sales very simply with an online tax system. If states want to be responsible, if they want to do the right thing, they should set up some sort of interstate compact that is voluntarily entered into without any coercive behavior on the part of the federal government in Washington. They should do something where they set up these origin-based systems, not a destination-based system which is designed to give government more power and people less freedom.